Hey, what's up guys? It's Tom Holland here. Welcome to the Spider-Man Homecoming special. I'm here to take you guys behind the scenes to get you up to date on everything you need to know about the new Spider-Man movie. Why am I the guy to tell you about this? You might ask. Don't tell anyone, but... You're the Spider-Man. No, I'm not. I'm not. This is just a costume. This is... You're on the ceiling! On the roof! Hey everyone. Iron who? Cap what? Wait a minute. You want the real Avengers? It's all about Spider-Man, right? I'm just a regular kid like you guys. Not bad. Good shot, buddy. Well, I mean, kind of. So let's get you up to speed. What has Spider-Man been up to? Well, I met my hero, Tony Stark. Oh, Mr. Parker. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Peter. It's about time we met. Took a trip to Berlin. Got a passport. Got a sick new suit. Minor upgrade from Tony Stark. Oh, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Kicked it with Captain America. You got hard, kid. Where are you from? Queens. Brooklyn. Hung out with the Avengers. And to cap it all off, Peter, you still with us? Uh, yeah, yeah. And action! One of the interesting things for me is how the movie starts. We see him having the time of his life. <laughs> that was awesome! Suddenly him being crammed on the subway. Oh yeah, uh, Peter's a teenager. Peter loves being Spider-Man, but he doesn't love being Peter Parker. And it's nice to see that contrast from the kid at summer camp to suddenly the kid back at school. Tom's playing an age of Spider-Man that we haven't seen on film before, but definitely harkens back to what's in the books. We love the joyfulness that Spider-Man has in the comics. This is our decision, to Imagine if you were Spider-Man and you could do all this amazing stuff. You would spend every moment of your day trying to maximize the amount of time you get to be Spider-Man. It's really fun because Peter Parker is not the finished article. Having met Tony Stark and thinking that he beat up Captain America. Do you know him too? It's the one shield. Then he beat me up. I think that's what really drives him to prove himself to Tony. I know school sucks. I know you want to save the world, but you're not ready yet. I really, really remember what it was like to be. 15, 16, 17, and everything is an 11. So stressed out lately. <laughs> Talking to a girl is just as stressful as trying to get into college, which is just as stressful as taking down a supervillain. That's when we really see why Peter Parker is one of the most beloved and powerful superheroes of the MCU. When the Russos and Feige came to me and said there was this opportunity to actually kind of reimagine and launch Spider-Man. Within Civil War, I was like, man, that's a trifecta. That's a great idea. A world where Spider-Man could get into the Avenger thing. I've been waiting for this moment for a while. Putting Spider-Man in the MCU is the best thing in the world for me as a storyteller. Now we can just have fun with what makes Spider-Man unique. He's very powerful. And he's the only character right now in the MCU that's in high school. You don't know Spider-Man. Now. It wouldn't be a Marvel movie if we didn't have an absolutely amazing new cast. So please, let me take you through my new phone contact. First off is Zendaya as the smart and weird Michelle. I don't think I had like a big reaction to being a part of this movie until like Comic-Con. I was like, yo, this is real. Zendaya herself really informed what we did with the character of Michelle. You guys are losers. Then why do you sit with us? I don't have any friends. She's weird, but she's super cool to me because I feel like usually what she says is very true and very real. Can we go already? Because I was hoping to get in some light protesting in front of one of the embassies before dinner. We have the Academy Award winner Marissa Tomei playing Aunt May. I have like a really big crush on this girl, on this woman. I mean... Okay. I would rather sort of take the spirit of who Aunt May is. In a way, they're both sort of rebuilding their life. She brings a youthful sort of innocence, but also not as much innocence as we've had in the past. OK, tough guy. Ah, man, what's that doing here? That's not supposed to be on here. Ah, one of my favorites. Spider-Man's best friend, Ned, played by my very real best friend, Jacob Batalon. It's probably the most important relationship throughout the movie. He's the only person who he confides in to talk about being Spider-Man. Can you spit venom? Shh, it's your favorite spider. Tarantula, 
Daddy Long Legs, Brown Recluse, Black Widow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the way Ned Leeds would be excited about finding out that his best friend is Spider-Man, Jacob Batalon is just as excited about being in a movie like this. Go get him, Spider-Man! And here is Tony Revolori as Peter's rival and tormentor, Flash Thompson. Flash is really just his interpretation of a modern bully. What's up, Parker? Tony Revolori showed this cocky on the outside, but a little insecure on the inside version of the character. I feel like I am actually becoming more and more like my character. I'm always like the guy that you're like, <laughs> Flash, right? Yeah, come on. And in real life now, it's like, <laughs> Tony, right? <laughs> Right? Kind of. Oh, I'm John Favreau. We have John Favreau in here. Back again is Happy Hogan. Young Peter Parker on behalf of Tony Stark, being vetted for uh, membership in the Avengers. One of the great tropes of coming of age stories is the older sibling who's always there giving you a hard time. Happy Hogan plays that role. What's that? What the hell are you wearing? It's my shoe. I really like coming back in this capacity of a guy who's sort of the next generation looking after the new guy. And what you find a happy, there's a Tony. And by Tony, I mean Iron Man. And by Iron Man, I mean RDJ. And by RDJ, I mean Robert Downey Jr. It's still going. There's still more. This is a little excessive. I'm a fan. I remember John rang me up. I was like, Robert's going to do it. I was like, that's amazing. I thought it would take like a huge amount of persuading. They were like, nope. We rang him up. We asked him. He said yes. He loved being here. He was like a happy little kid on set. I'm gonna pretend you didn't say that. It's a straightforward Spider-Man movie. There's always opportunity for heavy hitters dropping in to kind of support him. This one's particularly fun for me. Feels like the old band's back together again. Those two have obviously known each other for nearly 10 years and they know what to do. And it was really nice to just be thrown in at the deep end. And of course, yours truly as the web slinger himself. Tom's the bomb. He's just the man for the job. He's enthusiastic and bright and gifted and very physically talented guy. He just has this like really sort of like wide-eyed innocence, but you feel like there's a deep morality at the heart of it. He's a really good dude, and I think that that really shines through on screen. Oh, and I did mention that Robert Downey Jr. is in this movie as Iron Man, right? Don't do anything I would do, and definitely don't do anything I wouldn't do. There's a little gray area in there, and that's where you operate. I'm sick of him treating me like a kid all the time. But you are a kid. So Peter's dealing with a lot of normal teenage problems. Just amped up to superhero levels. Take learning to drive. So tonight we're shooting uh, the sequence where Spider-Man has stolen Flash's car and is driving towards the Vulture to capture him and stop him from ruining everything. Yeah. Oh. But basically, I sit in that car and a stunt driver sits in that little cabin and zips around these streets at lightning speed and it is terrifying. We crashed into the curb already. But it is so fun. It is fun, but being Spider-Man isn't just about driving around. You gotta get physical, you know? There hasn't been a day, I don't think, on this movie where I haven't had to use some sort of athletic ability. And it's nice to work with the stunt guys and say, actually, no, I think it would be cooler if I jumped down from there and the wire then picked me up later on. And the fact that they trust me to, to make that suggestion and then to perform it later is a real privilege. I really think we've benefited the movie by having me in the suit do the stunts and pull the suit off so you can see that I did it. And it's been so fun. And while I certainly do a fair share of web swinging and wall crawling, I definitely don't do it alone. My favorite one was Spider-Man is racing through a suburban area, which is super cool because we've never really seen that before. But because of the wires, we couldn't do it in one thing. So what we did was build like a box that I could sit in inside the shed and then my double Holland would go through the shed and then I would run out and then smash through this fence. And it was so nice to be able to work with him in the same shot because we've built up a great relationship and to both be watching the monitor at the same time being like, oh, that looks wicked, dude. That looks, oh, that's sick. Yes, mate, nice. That for me was the most fun I've had doing a stunt. But none of this awesome action would have been possible without the guidance of our incredible stunt coordinator, George Cottle, who always knows how to put the super in superhero. Yes. Mm. It looks so good. Mm. In 
this movie, Spider-Man has his hands full, juggling homework. But we have a Spanish quiz. <laughs> Do you really think the Avengers care about a Spanish quiz? Finding time for his friends and family. Peter, what is going on with you? And of course, busting bad guys. I'm really sorry. I'm so busy, I'm slammed. But not all bad guys are created equal, and we had to come up with something big. We tried to look at the character of this yes, vulture yes. as a sort of archetype. As what does a vulture do? A vulture picks and scavenges. So in the MCU, the vulture is a guy who goes around to all the superhero battles and scavenges all the advanced technology, the alien weapons, all the exotic stuff that's been left behind when Iron Man, the Avengers, and whoever clash with people who put the world in ruins. I always work backwards from what you would need to do what he's doing. Why would you need a wingsuit? Why do you need to fly up to a certain height? Would you need a helmet for when there's no oxygen? Why is this real? Why would you have this? And as you may know, the vulture is played by none other than Michael Keaton. I know, Michael Keaton. He's like the master of playing superheroes with wings. He's been doing it since the 80s. He even got nominated for an Oscar for doing it. The world's changing, boys. Time we change, too. I found a really interesting approach to what you all want to call a villain. He does corrupt things in order to fight what he sees as corruption, and I think he has a pretty strong argument. The moment that Michael Keaton zipped up the aviator jacket and there was an homage to the vulture, it was amazing. I think it was a really cool thing for Keaton to do, and I'm sure he will not disappoint. When I first got cast as Spider-Man, the one question that most people asked me was, can I have Iron Man's phone number? We'll call you. Well, did you have my numbers? No, I mean, we'll call you. Like, someone will call you. Oh. All right? But the next question I was asked most often was, what about the suit? Well, what about the suit? This is basically the suit he used to fight crime in before Tony Stark gave him the suit we all saw in Captain America Civil War. Lordy, can you even see in these? Um, these are my old school web shooters. These are cartridges. Pop out and go into there. People driving past today, like Spider Man, and they see me, they're like, oh, that's not Spider Man, Spider -Man. we know. Uh, excuse me, actually, that's top secret, you can't film that. Security! The idea that the Spider Man suit could be Stark Tech really just opened up the door to a lot of really great stuff. How'd you find me? Did you put a tracker in my suit or something? I put everything in your suit, including this heater. Oh. He's got taser webs, he's got spider trackers and tracers. There's even a little spider drone. <gasps> Has that been there the whole time? That's awesome. Now, if it looks like we're having a great time, that's because we are. And I have to tell you, I'm so excited, but you don't have to take my word for it. All you gotta do is check this out. Listen, Peter, forget the flying monster guy. There are people who handle this sort of thing. This is my chance to prove myself. Don't mess with me. Because I will kill you and everybody you love. I know, right? Crazy. Well, thanks for watching. If anybody asks what you've been up to lately, just tell them you've been hanging out with Spider Man. Incredible! Enough said.
Okay, so keeping with the comic book movie theme, did you know that the train scene in Spider-Man 2 cost more than $150 million to shoot? The producers had to close down more than 20 miles of New York City streets and purchase a $6 million subway train to decimate during the scene. Mm. Now, if you haven't already done it, remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to always receive the latest trailers the moment they are online. See you next time. Bye.